so shall we shall I'll, I'll put point wise independent of shape independent of shape of colliding objects independent of mass of colliding objects mass of colliding objects exclusively depends on nature of material of colliding objects depends on nature of pair of objects not for one object we never define e for a ob object for a pair of object now suppose a wood collides with a wall the wood and wall will have that it's a pair then wood and glass that pair will have value so now what is another thing different pairs will have different values it is defined for a pair of object not for one object huh? for wood what is e meaningless question wood glass how much of e wood rubber how much of e stone glass how much of e uh, this is very difficult quantity to measure so we have one more uh, method of measuring it the quotient of restitution of course this is in elasticity we will study this one the quotient of restitution is directly proportional to the yield strength by elastic modulus uh, so the price there may be questions for you you have to be careful huh? so when we discuss elasticity i'll introduce because now we don't know anything about elasticity this is one more way of predicting the quotient of restitution let in elastic chapter i'll stress it now the e is directly proportional to under root of yield strength by elastic modulus here <clears throat> okay this is the basic idea of the quotient of restitution so it should be different for different pair of objects here and then uh, what actually happens during collision so there is a graph there is like a force so the moment the body is come in contact I'll, I'll. this is one so let's let's go back there are two objects are there they are going to collide and after collision they'll be moving and they'll come in contact during collision then a forceful act no impulse of deformation v1 dash v2 dash then the latin common velocity uh, and again impulse of maximum deformation then impulse of reformation so this is a way of thinking on a problem your collision phenomena always you should analyze and finally they move with us so this is before collision this is after collision a force is force is acting no that force as a function of time i'll plot it uh, and what is this time this time you have to call it as deformation time delta td and this particular time reformation time so that delta td is what i'll write it here and this is delta tr let's go back to the definition of impulse so what is impulse force into time so area under ft graph what it will give impulse
will agree this area under ft graph because what is the basic definition of impulse impulse is equal to integral of f of dt can you remember this should be equal to change in momentum so this is what the impulse so what is impulse equal to area under ft graph so we do have areas this is area 1 this is area 2 so what what is another way of measuring quotient of restitution i'll plot the force exerted by one object another object uh, sir now you have to ask me sir this f is what force acting on first object or second object i think now you 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 know enough of laws of motion tell me what is this f force exerted by one object first object on second object or second on first object. either one no because according to newton's law equivalent opposite forces so you take any one object either m1 or m2 just study the nature of force that is acting so it will increase uh, no it will increase then becomes maximum then decreases so that force acting for duration of time is what we say impulse i plotted like this so i am getting a graph like this here so area under ft graph is what the impulse no according to this so what is the one more definition for impulse here we are bringing impulse is equal to area in force versus time graph what is the definition of impulse area the impulse of deformation by impulse of so impulse of reformation by impulse of deformation what is impulse of reformation here area under ft graph so shall i directly go for area a2 in ft graph area a1 in ft graph now, if these two areas are equal what does it mean what type of collision the, the negative sign will get eliminated jr will be negative when you calculate jr will be negative so don't bother that negative sign because uh, like a jr will be negative sign will come when you calculate okay now let's come for this one for elastic collision for e equal to 1 a2 will be equal to a1 for inelastic collision what should be a2 a2 should be less than a1 for perfect inelastic collision what happened? the a2 should be zero no a2 should be zero means finish or afterwards when the force ceases and they'll move with a common velocity so now so when collision occurs if you plot the force acting on any one object as a function of time then you will get some graph of like this with this graph open can we calculate quotient of restitution as yes, calculate directly the area under ft graph uh, sir how to identify which is uh, like a a2 and a1 so we, we know here at this particular point what happened they'll be moving the common velocity you know so what, what happened to magnitude of force it increases becomes maximum then start decreasing where you start decreasing what happened you break up you break up that graph you break up that curve into two parts i, I shown blue and a local shaded line so this will lead to impulse of reformation deformation this will lead to impulse of reformation so there's one way of asking question for us what is that by area under ft graph the force acting as a function of time on any one object if i plot that graph from that also we can determine quotient of restitution yes. Ah. Sir, the graph will touch the exact exact uh, delta t r no, sir. After delta t r. Huh, it will touch it. It will become zero, no? Okay, that, that you want to. Because afterward they lose contact, no? F should be zero. Yes, sir. 
I'm just giving all theoretical ideas. You have plenty of good questions related to all the basic thing. Okay, now now we have three types of collision. I'll introduce the fourth type of collision, where e will be greater than one. In books, they didn't suggest it, but it can happen. E greater than one means what happened? Means during collision. During collision, if a energy is released and that energy will happen if it is given to an object. Taken by the objects, then definite open it will lead to that one. So we don't have any much numerical based on this, but it's practically possible. Books what happened? We didn't upgrade it. After 1950, they did experiment and where they have a situation where e greater than one also will come because when they plotted the graph, this a2 was greater than a1. How it happens? So during collision open, some internal energy of the object will be converted into increase in kinetic energy. And area A two, what happened? It became A one. Uh, we do have experimental analysis in our books. What happened? We don't discuss. Huh? Theoretically, yes, E will be greater than one possible. E is possible, practically possible. Is practically possible. Okay, fine. So this is that we don't discuss any numericals. No numerical discussion. I'm making clear because the exp it's a total an experiment is there. So we don't. Uh, it's not there for our syllabus. Just leave it. Theoretically, if they ask you, S E can be greater than one also. Sir, is it elastic collision? No, not. It's an inelastic collision only. Still, what happen? E will be greater than one. So in that case, what will happen? When I go and check it, no, K F will be greater than K I. Let's come for this. E can be greater than one. Kf less than Ki will be. Kf can be greater than Ki also. Energy will be available. The kinetic energy of the elements will be greater than. So from where that will come? Uh, some due to in uh, like a internal energy of system. What point will get converted into increase in kinetic energy? So one exclusive experiment is there. So don't bother about E greater than K. It's not there for syllabus. But theoretically, they can suggest. They can ask you. It's practically possible. Now, what do you mean by inelastic collision? Kf not equal to Ki is inelastic collision. So I'll, I'll make the definition. Yes, friends. So here of inelastic collision means in inelastic collisions. What what does it mean? Kf not equal to Ki. That's all. It can be. Kf less than Ki, or Kf can be greater than Ki. It's an example I can't give. It's an experiment. If it were, I would have given. No, it's an experiment, and we don't have uh, the time to discuss that experiment. It would take some two, three hours. And just a theoretical proposal is what there. It's an experiment. It's available, which is not there for syllabus. No. I have to bind myself to the syllabus. Okay, don't get attracted with these things. Huh? Just this information. Just remember. Uh, now, what is the advantage of this quotient of restitution? L let's go for. Uh, let's take directly one problem. So there's a wall. There's a wall. It is moving with a velocity, say. Six meter per second, and this is a ball of mass m moving with two meter per second. Let quotient of restitution let let me define it as zero point four. They'll collide. I want the velocity of the ball after impact. Find. Find the velocity of ball just after impact. So we apply conservation of momentum because momentum is conserved no? in any situation. So applying conservation of momentum. 
what is the mass of the wall Ma mass of the ball let it be one mass of the wall let it be mw i'll apply condition of linear momentum initial momentum equal to final momentum what is initial momentum 6mw by minus 2m1 uh, after collision I'll, I'll write it here let me put the diagram uh, after collision what do we expect the wall wall will continue to move same velocity the ball will rebound that we have to calculate you call this as u1 this is u2 initial momentum is equal to final momentum. initial momentum 6m w minus 2m1 should be equal to final momentum 6mw minus of m1 v1 what is mw mw is what mass of the wall no? which will be infinity so you should not bring infinity finally what will happen this infinity equal to infinity we can't solve no don't don't cancel out huh? mathematically it's many students are like cancel out if you cancel out, then what you get v1 equal to 2 but answer is not 2 so this is undefined no so this is a totally we should not think as yes, momentum is conserved but mathematically don't try to express it so how to deal this problem the quotient of restitution is the only formula which is going to help us here. So here we'll bring the idea of line of impact. So shall we call this red color dotted line is a line of impact? How to uh, define line of impact? If two objects collide, The common normal is what? Line of impact. This shall I give name? Line of impact. So along this direction only what happened? That impulses will act. No? So let's define this as positive. Towards right, let me take positive. Let, let me define the thing now. So what is the quotient of restitution? The formula. Velocity of, relative velocity of separation. V2 bar minus V1 bar U1 bar minus U2 bar. This is the basic definition. So what is V2? V2 will be 6 plus 6. And what are V2, V1? These are velocities measured along line of impact. In the definition of quotient of restriction, what are that V2, V1, U1, U2? These are, they are velocities. The negative sign will not be there. Uh, V1 minus V2, no, it should be. Uh, this, if I remove this. It will be like this or, or, or we will do one thing. This will be V2 minus V1, U2 minus U1. If you want to remove that negative sign, you can write U1 minus U2. Because often we'll forget that sign. No? I'll prefer this particular thing. Huh? Okay, that was the basic definition. We have defined it, you see. Velocity of relative velocity of separation to relative velocity of approach. I'll take you back there. Yeah. Negative sign should come. If you write V1 minus V2, U1 minus U2, or you change V2 minus V1, the negative sign, what can get eliminated. So let me take out negative sign because the numericals we do try to forget in exam. So V2 minus V1 by U1 minus U2. Uh, I think. Uh, from definition I'll come it. We have started like this, no? Is that okay, no? Minus of V1 minus V2 bar, I'll write V2 minus V1. Now, what are these? These velocities measured, velocities of colliding objects, 
velocities of colliding objects measured along line of impact it's a strict condition in two dimensional collision you'll, you'll try to understand in one dimension the velocity of object will be always along line of impact in two dimensions you'll come to know that as the velocity of object need not be along line of impact. then you have to take components so time being in one dimension it doesn't make any much difference in two dimension you can see what is the use of this okay let's directly apply the formula now let's directly apply the formula and get the will get the velocity of the colliding ball that one according to the formula e is equal to v2 bar velocity of the wall plus 6 v1 i i don't know sign suppose say the unknown thing if you don't know sign don't, don't put it just leave it the sign will tell us if you get positive towards right if it gets negative towards left like this this will be and then u1 u1 will be how much minus 2 that of the wall plus 6 what is value of e e how much i give equal to 0 0.4 substitute here no 6 minus v1 minus 8 Anybody value V1? 9.2. 2.8. 9.2. 9.2. 9.2. 9.2. 9.2. 9.2. 9.2. 9.2. 9.2. 9.2. 9.2. 9.2. 9.2. 9.2. 9.2. 9.2. 9.2. 9